In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves now to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, have a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that schooled through Lenten observance and nourished by your word through holy restraint, we may be devoted to you with all our heart and be ever united in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people and said, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land, which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. Therefore, I teach you the statutes and decrees as the Lord my God has commanded me, that you may observe them in the land you are entering to occupy. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law, which I am setting before you today. However, take care and be earnestly on your guard, not to forget the things which your own eyes have seen, nor let them slip from your memory as long as you live, but teach them to your children and to your children's children. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. He spreads snow like wool, frost he strews like ashes. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so 
will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Our psalm today, Psalm 147, says, Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. And Jerusalem wasn't just a group of people. It would also refer to the physical city of Jerusalem. And this is a city surrounded by very high walls and, and 12 gates. It was built to keep the goodness in and the badness out. And that's similar, maybe, to where we find ourselves today. Uh, because of the recommendations of civic health authorities, many of us are just spending our days at home. Uh, we aren't officially quarantined, but uh, we may as well be. The house can seem a little confining, or it will. But the idea of this is to keep the bad out and to keep the good in. And so as long as we're going to be spending some time walled up in our homes, we might see it as an opportunity, a chance to continue or a chance to start our Lenten spring cleanings. How can I spend more time in prayer at home? How can the family pray together? Even if we're not in one place together, how can we pray together? Over the phone, through Skype, through whatever. As we spend more time at home and as families, we hear the words today of Psalm 147, Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. And those words challenge us to truly praise the Lord, not only out in the streets and in the marketplaces, but in our own homes. And let us stand now and once again offer our prayers to the Lord, our prayers, our needs, and the needs of the world. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for all the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of all nations, and for all in authority, that they would govern us wisely, justly, and prudently, let us pray to the Lord. For the conversion of our hearts and minds during this Lenten season, that we would strive to imitate the Lord and the Blessed Virgin Mary, let us pray to the Lord. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, the unemployed, for those suffering from depression or addiction, and for all those in any kind of danger, let us pray to the Lord. For all catechumens and candidates, as they prepare for a full initiation into the Catholic Church, let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for all the faithful departed that they may come to see the face of God and enjoy eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our God, we come before you today with these prayers spoken and many prayers in our hearts. We ask you in your kindness and mercy to hear them, and to answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Accept, O Lord, we pray, the prayers of your people along with these sacrificial offerings, and defend those who celebrate your mysteries from every kind of danger through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and, giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself, through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. And grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption, 
and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my house.
Let us pray. May the heavenly banquet, at which we have been fed, sanctify us, O Lord, and cleansing us of all errors, make us worthy of your promises from on high, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And bow down now for the blessing. Give to your people, O God, a resolve that is pleasing to you, for by conforming them to your teachings, you bestow on them every favor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Mm -hmm.